Hey guys, so today what we are going to do is I am gonna show you the easiest way to learn how to draw. Now most people when they draw, they wanna draw with lines, they draw eyes like almonds and make them look like spiders with eyelashes and we're gonna forget all that. I'm gonna to try to teach you how to draw using lines as guidelines and using shading to create depth and value. I call this method the face trace method, so pay attention and here we go. Okay, so the way that we're gonna start this out is we need to start with an image and we're gonna go into Google and we're gonna look up black and white portrait photography. Go ahead, go into Google, find a picture that, that you wanna work with or if you have one of your own, that works too. A couple things I wanna say really quickly about the images, make sure that as you're picking an image, you pick an image that has high contrast. That means that you want something that has really light lights and really dark darks. So if you're looking at this image, you can see that this image really is dark and gray, like there's really not any black blacks anywhere, and all of the grays are all kind of like, like light grays, there's really no white highlights. This is one that's gonna end up looking muddy. We want something where we've got very crisp transitions from light to dark, and if we're smart, we wanna find something that is more white than black because what that's gonna do is it's gonna be less shading. Okay, so we're gonna look for something that has more light than dark and is gonna have very definite lights and darks. So this would be a good one, but again, this is one that has lots of darks and so you're gonna end up shading a lot. So let's keep looking. If we scroll down a little bit more, any of these would probably be fine. I'm gonna pick this one though. This one is great because those eyes are so dark but then so white. The skin is, is a very light color compared to the hair and the eyebrows. So let's just go ahead and throw this in the vector converter and see how it goes. Now we're gonna use a program called Vector Magic. The reason that we use Vector Magic is because it helps us to simplify the colors. In this case, it's, it's values. But it helps us to simplify the colors and, so that we can get something manageable. Basically what we're gonna get here is a coloring book that's already been colored. In our case, because we're doing black and white, it's gonna be a black and white image that's set into just four different shades or values that we are going to use. So go ahead and upload your image. Now I've cropped my image a little bit because I wanna just focus in on the eyes. Um, we, I'm including the nose, I'm including a little bit of the hair, but really I want this drawing to be about the eyes. So I've zoomed in a little bit. And here's a pro tip. The more detail there is in your drawing, the more you have to draw. So if I zoom in on a facial feature, if I do a micro version of a particular image, there's actually going to be less detail for me to work with and it's going to be easier to pull it off. So this is like one of those this is like one of those hacks that's gonna make your life way easier. Okay, so we've got our initial image. I wanna go to a low detail level because again, I don't want it to be intricate and complex. I'm gonna to try to just get the bare minimum. So if you look on the right side at detail level, I'm gonna to try to go for low detail. It's gonna take just a second longer to re-vectorize, but the result is gonna be worth it. Okay, so here we go, we've got the full image. This is the unlimited array of values. We're gonna go here to custom. On the right side, if you look at colors, it's selected as unlimited right now, but we're gonna go to custom and we are gonna select just four values, okay? So it's gonna re-vectorize here. This will just take a minute. Okay, so if we have a look at this, we can see that this has been simplified into a few simple values. Now, if you have an account, you can download the image as a PDF or you can just take a screenshot. Either way, you'll want a file that you can print off and just use quickly as a reference. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we're gonna take the photocopy and we're gonna put it down on the table. And then we're gonna take our blank piece of paper and we're gonna put it down on top of that. Once we've done that, we're gonna just take a little bit of masking tape. And then I'm going to tape this together. I know this doesn't sound like rocket science at this point, but we're about to get there. Because an easy mistake that we make right here where I've got the 
right here where I've got the printout, I do not want to get this turned over and accidentally start working on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the back of my printout, right here. I'm just going to go to the back of the printout and I'm going to say print out. It's going to keep me from tracing on it. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is I am trying to trace the, the lines that go between each area of value. So like I said earlier, we picked four main areas of value. And we've got three different pencils that we're gonna be using. We've got a 2B, a 4B, and a 6B pencil. Okay, so the 2B pencil is what I'm gonna use for this light area right here. The 4B pencil is what I'm gonna use for the medium gray. And the 6B is what I'm gonna use for this dark area right there. Now this is a great image for us to use because there's lots of really dark darks, but they're not in huge areas. That means I don't have to do a lot of really, really dark shading. I've got lots of medium grays and middle grays um, that gives me something to shade, but pretty much the detail is all in those hard defined 6B areas. So the next thing for us to do is to just quickly trace the, the, the next thing for us to do is just quickly trace the transitions between these. Now you can see, on this image, one of the issues that we're gonna have is that there's lots of these squiggly lines. I'm gonna use what they call in math a line of best fit. So the line of best fit is gonna be somewhere in here. Now the reason for that is that the squiggly lines are not what's gonna make this look realistic. We're gonna have this be a blended area where it's got that kind of like flaky, flecky look. So I'm just gonna draw a line of best fit that goes in between this lighter gray and the darker gray areas. Here, where it's like a definite line, I can do all the detail there. But in those areas where there's lots of like, basically what it is is her pores, I'm gonna do a line of best fit that's gonna go right in there. Okay guys, so at this point, I have all of my lines traced. Now, you can see that I didn't really spend a very long time on those lines, and that's because a lot of what we're gonna do is gonna come down to observation, okay? So, I'm gonna just take the tape off. I can just fold this over, that's no big deal. I'm gonna take the tape off right here, and then I'm gonna keep this where I can see it and I'm gonna start shading. Now, when I shade, I really like to do the light stuff first. So I'm gonna go with this area right in here, and I'm just gonna start using my 2B to get all of these light areas. Then I'm gonna come in with my 4B pencil and I'm gonna do some of those darker areas. And then finally, I'm gonna come back with 6B and I'm gonna darken up the really dark areas, and then we'll do a process where we kinda of tighten the screws and make it all look really good. So. To start with, a couple of the things that I need, I've got my 2B, 4B, and 6B pencil. I've got my pencil sharpener. I've got my blending stomps, and I've also got a piece of sandpaper that I use, um, that I use for cleaning up my blending stomps. This is a really great method. I just kind of roll it over in my hand, and you can see all that graphite coming off. So this is what we're gonna be using primarily for blending, but I wanna get them nice and clean, especially as we're getting ready with these, with these 2B um, areas. They're gonna be very light, and so I do not want to have any excess graphite put down because I was being careless in the way that I started. Okay, another trick that I use, I always, always, always am gonna to go top to bottom, left to right when I, when I do my shading. The reason for that is that I'm right-handed. If I started on the top side on the right or the bottom side on the left, at some point my hand is gonna be going over what I've already drawn. That's not the end of the world if your hand goes on it. You can always put a piece of paper on top of your hand, but this just helps eliminate some smudging that's gonna make it look really kinda amateur. So here we go. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna start with this area right here. Um, up in the top left, and I'm going to use an artist grip on this pencil, which means I'm gonna be holding the end, and I'm just gonna shade just like this. Now the nice thing about this is I can get very smooth, even strokes because I'm using the side of the lead, not the, not the tip, and so I'm able to get those smooth, even strokes just a little bit easier than we might otherwise. 
So here we go, we're just gonna work our way down here. Now as I'm doing these strokes, I wanna make sure that nothing is touching. I don't, I, or sorry, as I'm working my way down, I wanna make sure that these, that these strokes that I'm making, that they're all touching, that I don't wanna see white in the middle. They don't have to be perfect, and when we start blending, it's gonna, everything's gonna work itself out. But if everything's touching, it's just a lot easier to achieve a smooth value. So I want to make sure that there's no white space in between there. I'm just checking my drawing, making sure that we're getting everything that we need to. You can see that you could spend a lot of time on this if you wanted to, but really, it doesn't take a long time to make something look realistic. Okay, so I am not going to spend a ton of time on this you are more than welcome to. Okay, so now I'm gonna just use my blending stump. I'm gonna go in the opposite direction from the way that I shaded, and I'm just gonna smooth out those values. I'm gonna try to do long, smooth strokes. I'm getting a little choppy right here, so I'm gonna just go in circles instead of straight back and forth, just to avoid any hard lines. Okay, so now we are gonna move on to our 4B pencil. So this is where we're gonna hit some of these darker areas where we're gonna get some of those middle grays. So with this, I'm gonna just be pushing down a little bit harder. Last time was real light. I'm gonna use the same grip though. I'm gonna use that nice artist grip from the end of the pencil that's gonna help me get long, smooth strokes. Okay, so here we go. Now if you're a real pro with the pencil, you can get the same, the same depth of value, which means like how dark something is. You can get the same depth of value with all, almost all of your pencils. It's just how easy it is, it's just how easy it is to get that depth of value. So I do have to push down a little bit harder. I do, I do wanna be making sure that, I do wanna be making sure that I'm going darker than I did with my 2B. It's really discouraging when you're doing a drawing and you end up, oh wow, it's all the same value. And it just doesn't really look the way that you want it to look. Now I just switched the angle that I was shading on. We don't really want to do that a ton. I like to keep my shading all going the same direction. But sometimes you have to just kind of for ease of shading. It's just the way it goes. So I'm just gonna pick two directions that I'm shading and that's gonna be all I use. Hey, as you, as you guys are walking around, will you make sure that you're not scuffing your feet? I don't mind that you're in here, but I can, yeah, I don't wanna have to edit out your footsteps out of this video. Okay, so we're mostly done with our, with our shading. We just have one pencil left to go. Now, this is the best part. This is the part where it all comes together because to this point, it still kind of looks like a little like, I don't know if this is gonna work out, right? But when we start putting in those dark values, this is where it all comes together. So with these first two layers of shading, I haven't really been very exact. We've used those guidelines to tell us where things need to go for the most part. 
but now I'm gonna be referring to my, my printout more and more because these lines are the most important. So you can kind of get through, skate through on some of these other ones, but this is where you make it look really realistic or where it all kind of starts to fall apart. So pay attention and, and do good on this part. Okay, so now we're to the point where we've got most of our values blocked in. Now what I wanna do is I'm going to use my blending stumps to really kind of key in on some areas that I feel like need a little definition and make things look a little bit more smooth. So for example, up here in this top corner, we have quite a definite transition. I'm just gonna soften that up by using that blending stump and just kind of make it so that everything in here just kind of fades into itself what's around it okay it's easy to lose definition here because truly that's what we're doing is we're shading away some of the definition i'm going to go back into my light area so i'm going to use this to clean it off but even though it's easy to lose that definition we want to we want to know where we want definition and where we don't so here on the cheeks, definition is really not what we're not what we're after. So I'm just going to be doing lots of blending here to try to soften these features up. And then a little bit of blending here is going to kind of carry that. Sometimes there's nothing that Nothing that works quite as well as the old fingers. So don't be afraid to use them. There we go. Okay, now I want to be careful. I don't want to shade over the top of these eyelashes because it's just going to, like you can see, if I went right here, it just kind of pulls all of that off. And so I want to be really careful when I'm working around the eyelashes. That's why I like to get those eyelashes done kind of right there at the end. It's not gonna cause trouble for anything. So just ease this transition in there. A little bit more transitioning that we can do up here. If you're finding that you want something to blend more or less than it is, um, the secret is not to push harder with your blending stump when you when you push harder with it sometimes it just pushes things harder into the paper and then it makes it so that you're not actually able to get any movement with any of those any of the graphite it just kind of stays where it is because you've pushed it too hard and so we want to make sure that as we're shading and blending that we're not ever pushing hard there's a right pencil for the job and a wrong pencil for the job and a little bit of pressure is okay, but we don't wanna be using the wrong pencil for the wrong thing because that is where we get into trouble. <laughs> 